Hello, my name is Adam Golikowski and welcome to Leadership in Life. Our second session is on the subject of accepting accountability for the messages that we send. This video will challenge you to recognize the difference between responsibility and accountability. To accept accountability for the messages that you send and to stop looking for guilt, fault, and blame in others and instead manage and use the five steps of managing accountability. At the end of this video, you'll be asked to email me examples of how this video has actually helped you accept accountability for the messages that you send. To lay the foundation, let's take a look at the communication model. In the first place, the sender sends a message to a receiver. The receiver then interprets the message and then also feeds back to the sender what the receiver believed the message to be. The sender then feeds back to the receiver whether or not the message was understood. And this is an example of a perfect communication. However, too often there is miscommunication because feedback is left out of the process. To make matters worse, when a sender does fail in communicating exactly what the sender means to the receiver, the sender then heaps guilt, fault, and blame on the receiver for not listening correctly. Now most humans do this because they flat out do not understand the difference between responsibility and accountability. So let me ask you this question. Who is responsible for communication to be understood? The sender or the receiver? Now most of the managers in the leadership classes that I conduct will answer this question by saying, the sender. And to them I respond, absolutely, positively, without a doubt, wrong. Taken aback, they figure out that if it isn't the sender, it's got to be, and the answer, the receiver. To what I respond, absolutely, positively, without a doubt, wrong. Now, after a little while, they figure out that the answer is actually both. And isn't that true? Both the sender and the receiver are responsible for communication to be understood. Actually, when a sender sends a message and sees in the face of the receiver that the receiver doesn't actually understand the message, you know what I mean, like, uh, like the deer in the headlights look. Isn't it reasonable for the sender to take the responsibility to ask the receiver to repeat back the message? Subsequently, when a receiver doesn't understand the message, isn't it reasonable for the receiver to accept the responsibility of asking a clarifying question? Of course it would be. Now let's answer the same question with the focus being on accountability. So who is accountable for a message to be understood, the sender or the receiver? And by the way, most people get this one right the first time, as I'm guessing that you did. And of course the answer is the sender. But the question is, what does that mean? What does it mean when the sender accepts accountability for sending the message? It means that when we send it, we own the result. It means that when I ask someone to bring me a hot dog, and then 10 minutes later they come back with a banana, it isn't fair for me to say to them, what's wrong with you? I said I wanted a hot dog. Instead, what I really need to do is ask this person a question. And the question puts the emphasis on me and the accountability on me. And the question is, what did I say that gave you the impression I wanted a banana? Accountability to be understood for communication rests in the hands of the sender. Unfortunately, it's a painful experience for those of us who want to become a leader to recognize that becoming a leader requires the courage to accept accountability for the things we ask other people to do. 
when a team member drops a ball because of misinterpreting what you said and it comes to the attention of your boss your boss doesn't go to that team member your boss goes to you you are accountable when team members fail you fail when team members succeed you succeed in the workplace organizational structure managers wear two hats they wear their responsible hat and they wear their accountable hat so when your boss assigns you a project you automatically put on your responsible hat however when you hire me to help you complete that project you put on your accountable hat because you're now accountable for the results that I give in the completion of that project yet you're still responsible for your boss to complete the project now we're at an interesting point in our conversation most of the time when people accept responsibility for the tasks they're given they do that willingly however some people actually become personally accountable not only responsible but personally accountable like you and like me meaning you do the job not only because your boss asks you to do the job you do the job because you're personally accountable and you want to do your very best because your name is on it however people like you and me we often think we're accountable for things but when we don't do things we're supposed to do instead of admitting it and accepting accountability we give excuses I know I've done it and I'm pretty sure you've done it raise your hand if you love to hear excuses when I ask that question in my leadership classes no one ever raises their hand everyone hates excuses and no one wants to hear them so here's something for you to think about when you want to quit hearing excuses stop giving them occasionally when I leave for work in the morning my wife often asks me to bring home a lottery ticket when I return home in the evening I pull into the garage my wife generally opens the door that leads to our home and out runs our puppy and jumps in the car and kisses me all over doesn't my wife run out jump in the car and kiss me all over not a chance she stands at the threshold of the door and she says did you bring home the lottery ticket and when I didn't I used to offer excuses well I was too busy a client wanted this blah 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 however I quit doing that now I simply say to my wife I'm sorry dear I did not bring home the lottery ticket I'll go get it now and I get back in my car take my puppy for a ride to the gas station and I come back with a lottery ticket when your boss asks you to do something and later on he catches you and said did you get it done and you didn't don't be defensive simply apologize and say the following words I'm sorry boss I didn't get that done tell you what I'll have it done in about a half an hour or as soon as you can accepting accountability is something that we want you to do when you didn't do something please accept accountability and then make a new commitment now we all know there are many other people who do not have what we called personal accountability and these people are people who do not feel responsible or accountable for their actions these people are really quite safe because they simply do only what you ask them to do and by the way when you ask them to do something and they do only that and that causes a problem they're in fat city they can simply sit back in their chair and say hey it's no skin off my nose I did what you told me to do have you met these people do you have any of these people reporting to you well let's spend a few minutes on guilt fault and blame when the manager's boss points out that a particular project is not on schedule the manager then starts to play the blame game the manager says to the boss I did everything I was supposed to do I told them what to do I explained it correctly it's their fault they didn't get it right they're to blame 
One of the most common examples of heaping guilt, fault, and blame is when a manager walks into a situation in which there is a visible problem. Now, the first thing the manager says is, who did this? Looking for guilt. Followed by, how did this happen? Looking for fault. Followed by, how many times have I told you? Looking for blame. When this behavior occurs, nothing positive happens. The manager is frustrated, the worker is belittled, and no action has been taken to correct the problem. On top of looking for guilt, fault, and blame, the manager then starts spitting out instructions about what to do to solve the problem. As if the manager is the only one who has a brain to give a good solution. After all, managers are all-knowing. At least, that's what managers think. It is my position that as a leader, the leader would not do what a manager does. The leader would follow the five steps in managing accountability. Now in the first step, the leader simply asks, does everybody realize that we have a problem? I love asking this question because when I do, somebody in the group always says, I didn't do it. To them I say, look, I'm not looking for guilt, fault, and blame. What I'm looking for is agreement with everyone that we have a problem. Now once we get agreement, the second step requires the leader to ask for solutions from the people closest to the problem, the people who are responsible to do the work. In the third step, the manager analyzes the solutions, and in the fourth step, the leader assigns various solutions to various people to help them be responsible. Executing the fifth step, the manager asks people to schedule a meeting with the manager so that at this particular meeting, the manager can ask for the genesis of the problem and then what are the steps each person is going to do to make sure that problem doesn't happen again. What I want to know is who is responsible. After all, when I assigned the project to somebody, they became responsible and that's the person that I want to coach for improvement. As promised, I'm asking you to practice the following behaviors. First, accept the fact that when you assign tasks to people, you are accountable for the results they get. Second, be accountable to yourself for the things you say you're going to do and don't give any excuses. Third, stop looking for guilt, fault, and blame in others. Instead, look for who's responsible. And fourth, memorize the five steps of managing accountability. After practicing these behaviors for seven days, please share your results in an email to me at adamg at appliedleadershipservices.com. And finally, tell your friends about this video and ask them to watch it.